Okay, hello YouTube, good morning, good evening, uh, whatever time it is right there. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about freedom of speech. I think it's uh, important to discuss, especially in my case, where anybody that's known me for the last couple of years knows that um, I am very uh, afraid of our freedom of speech being taken away. And the uh, everything that's happened to me is obviously as a result of my free speech. Uh, the ex uh, wanting to put restraining orders because you know whatever I put in an email, she feels that that's some reason to to harm me uh, with a restraining order. Uh, she obviously you know she knows that I'm, that I'm not a dangerous or violent guy. I, I just get angry about stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. But she knows that she could use that against me in in court. So. Um, it's unfortunate because that's given the government uh, a perfect opportunity to censor me in other ways. So I've got like uh, massive amounts of charges stacked up against me. Uh, I could be facing a whole bunch of time in jail. Um, just also because there's so many people here that, that don't understand their rights. Now my rights, you know, when somebody smashes my window out, it doesn't matter who it is. If they're smashing my window window out during a 30 second conversation then there's a problem I mean straight up so um, anyway I'm reading this constitution here and it's a very big problem you know because I'm, I'm just thinking about it and it's like wow they could just uh, do whatever they want it's kind of like you have the mob and, the, and there's no cops to call so you know if any of the cops in Beloit want to give me a call please call me okay because uh, you know we need some cops to, to, to save us from the mob um, okay here we go uh, amendment one Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press both of those in my cases is freedom of the speech and freedom of the press um, I've been an independent journalist for over two years now. Uh, that makes me press. I'm a member of the people's press. Okay, I don't need to have a, a, a corporation that's a media corporation. Uh, Pirate Bang does happen to be uh, incorporated as a media corporation, so there's that as well. Um, but anyway, uh, of uh, Let's see. We're abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of, or the right of the people to peaceably assemble. Okay, so now if it's a right, that means you shouldn't have to pay anyone for it. But you have to go get a permit to assemble somewhere now. So that's totally against the Constitution. You should be able to assemble wherever you want and go, hey, what's going on here? Something's wrong. And to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Okay, so they don't want people gathering anywhere. Because then you could just like rush the building, I guess. You know, if you had, you know, to, if you had the people just all go to Washington and none of them even have to be armed. You just have a ton of people all go to Washington and then, okay, we're taking our government back now. You know, you just have millions of people just go there and be like, okay, you guys gotta go. I mean, how many of us do you really want to shoot? Do you want to have another Tiananmen Square or something like that? I mean, when we saw that Tiananmen Square stuff happen, we were we were appalled by it. But you know what? It almost seems like that can happen here right now. If like a bunch of unarmed people went to uh, went went to Washington and said, "Hey, this is our government. We have a right to abolish it. We're going to abolish it and do things. We're going to change some stuff around and have a new government now in a totally peaceful way." All of these people would be j just totally. Uh, defending their jobs and that was the biggest thing that was really shocking is that they needed me in that jail I mean these people I'm job security I was job security there's somebody to guard all right uh, they don't care that I, I talked to so many to try and find a little bit of compassion in some of these guards they don't care they've been programmed to not care about you because they can't sleep at night if they think that you're in this cell uh, just for 24 hours be in a, in, a, in a jail cell and, and know what that's like and, and no judge and no cop and no guard and no sheriff deputy has ever been served any time in bars most of them 
I would say the overwhelming majority of them. And I think it's a purpose of if you knew what the inside of the cage was like, you probably wouldn't be putting too many people in it. And then we have judges that are like dictators sitting on thrones in this country and they scare you out of your right to a jury, your right to a grand jury just by being in their court. But they are dictators. They uh, say, okay, well, we, we, we'll plea bargain you for a year uh, so that, you know, you don't want to risk the jury. You know, and, and it's not that I, I, I'm, I'm worried about whether I'm innocent or whether my rights are respected. It's just that I'm not sure if they, if they can't find 12 people that, that can get by me that, that don't know their rights. You know, and the way they railroad that process, am I going to be able to pick the jurors that I want? Or are they going to be like, hey, you're, you know, they don't want constitutionalists in there. So, so it, it's going to be a constant battle back and forth with the jury. So, you know, what do I do? <sighs> so anyway, you know, I mean, I'm convinced that if you put, uh, tw you know, 12 people on the bench that, you know, know the Constitution, at least one of them is going to hang back and go, wait a minute, we can't, like, send this guy to jail forever for for what happened, you know? I mean, the only thing that you could consider sending me to jail for is when my window is smashed out, taking off and fleeing. But and none of this other stuff, this, you know, sending an email to somebody or a phone call or something like that, you know, but then do you want to send a guy to jail for fleeing because during a 45 second dealing with the Bloy Police Department, he had his hands up and he was remaining silent and his window was smashed out. So do you want to then send that guy to jail over that when he was already in a, in a situation where you, you, you freaked this guy out enough to where you, you smashed his window and he, and he hit the gas and he's, he's that afraid of the police? that he would do something like that. We have a problem here in Beloit. Beloit has the highest crime rate in Wisconsin. That's that's something I heard on the news a couple weeks ago. Wisconsin's highest crime rate. So, um, you know, worse than Milwaukee. Um, I don't know if that's, I, I know it, it was bad at one time, but so I think it's because that there's so many cops and there's so many people trying to justify their jobs and there's so few jobs in our really bad economy uh, that we're just uh, strangling ourselves. I mean, we're just like, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't have to string myself up because eventually, you know what I mean? I'll just, you know, we're, we're strangling ourselves to death, you know, and, and, and at one point, you know, with these cops being so afraid of the people, and the people being so afraid of the cops, it, it's it's gonna come to a head, and that that's gonna that's gonna stink, you know. Um, we need to get back to peace and stop all this conflict, and it's very hard to do that when there's millions of dollars driving the con conflict and wanting more conflict because it makes more money. Um, we got a lot of our brothers and sisters behind bars, you know, political prisoners in this country, and you don't really it doesn't that doesn't hit home for you until you've actually been a political prisoner where you're not in there going oh man I did something wrong I'm, oh I just I'm just doing my time you know that's a different story when you've actually done something wrong and you know you did something wrong and you're doing your time when you're in here going I can't believe it every almost I, you know how many times I said I can't believe it I can't believe it that that we've gone this far down the the rabbit hole to communism in this country you know these people that don't you know and then the, the, the guards don't want to be role, role models they want to treat you like dirt regardless of whether you're guilty of anything or not if you're orange if you're an orange you're guilty okay all they have to do now to make you guilty they don't even need a jury or anything they put a newspaper article they uh, throw you in jail and they change your clothing and you're guilty. And with that, um, I think that's a uh, you know a thoughtful place to leave it. God bless.